Costco is cheap. Really cheap. This chicken costs $5. These birds are an iconic Costco product. Costco sells about 60 million of them every year. Sounds like a great moneymaker, right? Wrong. Costco sells these chickens at a loss, sometimes up to 30 to 40 million dollars per year. The chickens are a lure to get customers in the door. They're placed strategically at the back of every Costco, so customers might pick up other items along the way. That's why Costco wants to keep the price so low. The trouble is that chicken prices have crept up over the last 10 years, and the industry is practically an oligopoly run by the likes of Tyson and Purdue. Costco, like most American grocers, buys from these behemoth companies because there's no other option. But not anymore. In 2016, Costco announced its plans to open a chicken farming operation in eastern Nebraska. It will own the whole supply chain, from baby chicks to feed to the final product. This operation will provide Costco with 40% of its yearly chicken needs, about 100 million chickens. That's 100 million chickens it won't have to buy from Tyson or Purdue. But here's the problem. Large-scale chicken farming doesn't really exist in Nebraska. So Costco is paying the not-so-cheap price of $440 million to make it happen. Costco's chicken operation will process about 2 million chickens every week. Here's how it will work. Costco will own the chickens, feed, and the processing plant. Local farmers will own the barns and equipment and raise Costco's chickens to maturity. Then, the chickens will go to the plant in Fremont, Nebraska, where workers will prep the birds for sale. Some will be sold in parts, but most will become those famous rotisserie chickens. This model is called vertically integrated agriculture. It's a relatively new method of farming, but today it's responsible for 95% of the nearly 9 billion chickens produced in America each year. So, how did we get here? In the early 20th century, chicken meat was merely a byproduct of egg production. The only chickens sold for meat were older hens who could no longer lay eggs. So it was a rare and expensive product, even though the meat would be tough and unpalatable by today's standards. But that changed rapidly after World War II. A couple of large companies, Tyson and Purdue, found ways to increase the number of chickens they would raise through the industrial model where large numbers of similar breeds are raised in confinement in houses. And the discovery that antibiotics uh, administered in small doses daily not only keep the chickens healthy, but it would bring them to market weight faster. Farmers could now raise fatter chickens with less feed in less time, and Americans quickly gained a taste for them. In 2012, the average American consumed four times as much chicken as they did in 1950. More people eating more chicken sounds great for farmers, right? Not really. Independent farmers struggled to keep up with costly new equipment, so small to mid-sized farms began disappearing. Vertically integrated mega farms took their place, producing 29% of chickens in 1967, but 95% today. By 2017, the industry produced over $30 billion worth of chickens. So chicken went from a luxury product to the most commonly consumed meat in just a few decades. But this system has its own problems. The modern chicken industry has faced a slew of criticisms. Inhumane treatment of the chickens, devaluation of property near processing plants, abusive treatment of plant workers, environmental degradation, and exploitative farming contracts. The contracts especially have come under fire in recent years, as farmers speak out in documentaries and file lawsuits against their former employers. Just ask Craig Watts, who farmed chickens for Purdue from 1992 to 2016. You just turned over the control of your farm to that company. You did it the way they told you to do it, whether it made sense to you or not. But at the end of the day, you could follow those to a T and they could still find something that they didn't like. It was like hitting a moving target. A typical mega farm has three to five chicken barns, each of which costs the farmers about $200,000. Journalist Christopher Leonard argued in his 2014 book, The Meat Racket, that this system makes farmers into modern day sharecroppers trapped in indebted servitude on the edge of bankruptcy. But taking their business elsewhere isn't an option for chicken farmers. Chicken companies essentially have spheres of influence across the US, and most farmers only live close to one of them. To top it off, wholesale chicken prices have shot up over the last 10 years. 
Recent lawsuits alleged that this is because the biggest chicken companies illegally conspired to fix prices. To put it simply, chicken companies are making huge profits, but consumers are paying more and many chicken farmers live in poverty. This is the industry that Costco is about to enter, but it wants to do it differently. While the specifics of Costco's contracts are confidential, a representative explained the basics to CNBC. Let's take a look. First, Costco offers 15-year guaranteed contracts. Most contracts are much shorter, sometimes only lasting one year or even just one flock of chickens. This should give Costco's farmers time to pay off their $2 million loans. However, Costco can also cancel a contract with 90 days notice. I, I don't know why we would exit a contract unless there was some gross negligence on behalf of, on behalf of the grower. I think that's the reason those types of arrangements are there. Christopher Leonard argues that similar terms in other contracts make it too easy for companies to cancel, giving them a disproportionate amount of power over the farmers. Second, Costco will pay a baseline amount for each flock regardless of quality, as well as bonuses for good flocks. If a farmer consistently underperforms, they'll be placed in a grower improvement program. Which basically says like, okay, grower, here's, here's a challenge we see, and this is a new benchmark we want to help you get to so that you're performing better and working with them on that. Watts, the former Purdue farmer, sees the program as nothing more than a first step to a canceled contract. Yeah, that's pretty common in poultry contracts. You know, one bad flock could make a three flock average really bad in a hurry. Third, Costco is working with the Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality to meet standards that are not required by state or federal laws. But researchers from Johns Hopkins argue that regulations can only do so much to prevent the worst outcomes of large-scale, vertically integrated agriculture. That part of Nebraska has somewhat of a fragile ecosystem, and, and the, the waste that is generated, everybody says, oh, it's just put on fields, it's great fertilizer. Well, in the right qua uh, quantities, it is, but if you're producing too many chickens in a really small area, it becomes a runoff problem. Finally, Costco will pay its 1,000 meatpacking plant workers $15 an hour, well above Nebraska's $9 state minimum wage. However, that's still significantly less than the starting salary at Hormel's plant in the 1990s. Costco's chicken operation will add an estimated $1.2 billion to Nebraska's annual GDP, so it could be a boon for Nebraska. Farmers who have signed up hope that adding chickens will bolster their farms for years to come. One of the most exciting parts of adding chickens to our operation is that I have a daughter who is graduating from University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Because of the chicken operation, we're able to bring her home. But others disagree. Randy Rupert, a longtime resident of eastern Nebraska, formed a group specifically to oppose the move. We don't want vertical integration in Nebraska. It's wrong-headed, it's bad for the environment, it's bad for farmers, it's bad for towns. Our, our mantra is this is not farming, this is, this is industrial production of widgets. Costco's chicken operation won't open for another year. And besides, the industry as a whole is moving towards organic chicken. But with the state of the industry as it is now, it's worth asking, is $5 for a whole chicken just too good to be true?